So in this video, we're going to start looking at the basics of kinematics. For the AP Physics 1 exam, it's very important to know the underlying concepts as opposed to just being able to plug numbers into an equation and getting answers. Because the test is more geared towards conceptual thinking. Some of the questions might not even require you to plug in numbers. It just might be qualitative as opposed to quantitative. And as we look at kinematics, kinematics relates to motion of objects, but is not concerned with the forces that cause the motion. So when we look at kinematics, we have to know vectors and scalars. Vectors have magnitudes and directions, whereas scalar only has magnitude but no direction. So an example of a vector would be displacement, and an example of a scalar would be distance. Vect a displacement would be a vector because it's concerned with the direction traveled. So a displacement is concerned with the distance between the start point and the end point, whereas distance would be the route you take to get to from point A to point B. And velocity gives you a direction and it gives you the magnitude, whereas speed only gives you the magnitude. So if I told you someone is traveling five meters per second, you know the speed, you know which, uh, you know how how fast that person is going, but you don't know if he's going northeast, south, west. But if I told you that person is going five meters per second west, you know exactly how fast that person is going and where that person is headed. So. Let's look at an example. So, if, if we're going from point A to point B. Let's say the route you take is 30 kilometers south and then 50 kilometers northeast. The distance you travel is 50 plus, uh, 50 plus 30, which is 80. So distance equals 80 kilometers. But if you're looking for the displacement, how far away are you from your start point? So the distance from A to B we're going to say is 40 kilometers. So the displacement is only 40 kilometers because you're only 40 kilometers away from your start point. Now, if we're looking at the speed, speed is equal to distance divided by time duration. So delta t just means change in time. So if we're looking for speed, we would find the distance, which is 80 kilometers. And that's, again, is concerned with the route you take. So that's 30 kilometers south, 50 kilometers northeast, and that yields 80 kilometers total distance. So that's speed. When you're looking for speed, you take 80 divided by the time duration. But if you're looking for velocity, If you're looking for velocity, you take the displacement, which would be 40 kilometers. I forgot to write that units. 40 kilometers divided by the time duration. Notice that speed is not just the magnitude of the velocity. So it's very important that you know speed is distance divided by time duration, whereas velocity is displacement divided by time duration. And when we have vectors, we always want to break them up into their x and y components. So let's look at how we break vectors into their individual components. So let's draw a coordinate plane and, and draw a vector and go from there. So I'm going to use red for this one. 
let's let's use black for the vector. So let's say from the origin, uh, something travels at 10 meters per second northeast. So that's let's just say 45 degrees from the horizontal. So now if we wanted to break this into its x and y components, how do we do that? Well, what do you do is draw a right triangle. And I always like to draw a dashed line to show the x and y components. So the x components would be, that's hard to see, let's just draw it again outside of the coordinate plane and draw the dashed lines there. So let's say this is 10 meters per second. Let's say this is the x components. And let's we'll say this is the y component. And this degree over here is 45 degrees. Now, in order to break it into its co individual components, it's very important to know how to use basic trigonometry. So in order to do that, you have to know what Soka Toa. So Soka Toa simplifies what each sine, cosine, and tangent represents. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Whereas cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now tangent on the other hand is opposite over adjacent. So if we look at this, S stands for sine, opposite, opposite is represented with the O, and H is for hypotenuse, so sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. The numerator is always first, so opposite is on top, so opposite O comes before H, so so toa. And cosine, same thing with cosine, Co C is cosine, A is adjacent, H is hypotenuse, and then tangent is obviously opposite over adjacent. So to solve this, we need to know what is the opposite, what is adjacent. So we can see that the x component is adjacent to the 45 degree angle, whereas the y component is opposite. So we would use sine to figure out y and we would use cosine to figure out x. So, so let's go on a different sheet and f figure out how to do it. So, so we know sine of 45 is equal to opposite which is as we can see y over hypotenuse which is 10 so if we want to look for y all we have to do is multiply 10 times sine of 45 so y is equal to 10 times sine of 45 degrees and if we're looking for the x component, we would use cosine of 45 is equal to x over the hypotenuse, which is 10. And we do the same thing. So x is equal to 10 times cosine of 45. Now, 
if we're, if we're given any of the individual components, we can also find the resultant just the same way using sine, cosine, and tangent. So now let's look some more at the kinematics since we know how to deal with vectors now. So as I've already mentioned, vectors always must be resolved into their individual components. But now let's look at how you look at distance, velocity, and acceleration graphs because those are commonly tested on the AP exam. Let's first look at position versus time. Time is always on the x-axis. We'll say, we'll say the first one is position versus time. The second one we'll say is velocity versus time. And we'll say the next one is acceleration versus time. Now, how are these graphs related? As we know, velocity is the change in position over a period of time. So we know that the slope of the position graph is going to be the, the velocity. And at acceleration is the change in velocity. So the slope of the velocity graph will be the acceleration. And if it's a constant velocity like this, which means a straight line means constant velocity, then we have zero accelerations, zero acceleration. So then there is no acceleration. The, the object is going at a constant velocity. And if the velocity was constant, the position would be changing steadily, so it would be linear, something like this. Now, if it was negative velocity, it would be below the x uh, below the x-axis, and the position graph would be going downwards. And the acceleration, if the velocity is not changing, would still be zero. Now, let's look at an instance where the position is changing, like a projectile motion. So, let's say the position graph will just use p for position and then t for time. So let's say the position graph looks something like this. Now this is project as we can see clearly this is projectile motion because the object starts somewhere at the bottom, goes up, reaches a maximum point, then comes back down. Now the velocity graph for this would look something like this. And we'll use V and T for velocity and time. This makes sense because we can see that the velocity is the, uh, the velocity is decrease the change in the change from point to point here is decreasing and at the and at the top it reaches a point where velocity is zero because it's going from positive velocity to negative velocity so it has to cross the x-axis at one point so at this point the velocity is zero and from this point on, the velocity is negative. This is, this is where we can see the velocity is negative and it's constantly going downwards. But here, we see that the position is to, it's going upwards, so velocity is positive. But the distances between each individual point is decreasing, so velocity is decreasing. And now we see that there is a change in velocity with change in time. So we know that there is an acceleration. 
acceleration is the slope of this line and that's a negative value. And this also makes sense because we know in projectile motion the acceleration is negative g which is equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Now if we look at the relationship between all three graphs we can see that the velocity versus time graph represents change in the slope of the position graph and the acceleration graph represents a change in the velocity graph. And when the position graph is curved, usually when it's curved there is usually acceleration. And when the velocity graph is not a horizontal line, it's a linear or it, it, when it's linear it's a constant acceleration. And if the velocity graph was curved, the acceleration if the velocity graph was curved like this, the acceleration graph would look something like this, linear. But since uniform, uh, there's a uniform acceleration, we have a horizontal line for acceleration. That's it for my video on kinematics. And please do subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, leave, leave a comment below. Any suggestions for improvement, I would definitely like to see some feedback. And thank you for watching. Take care, guys.